Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we came up with an equation that described the heat flow through a single spherical shell. Now we need to come up with an equation through a double shell. In other words, we have two layers, and of course, we can expand that to three or four and five once we see the pattern. Notice that if we look at this alone right here, we ignore this portion of the equation, this is the equation that we derived on the previous video. But now that I have the second layer, and realizing that the heat flow through each layer must be constant, we can say that Q dot must then also be equal to this. Notice that TA is bigger than TB and TB is bigger than TC. So we're going to now use the principle that if we have two equations or two fractions set equal to each other, we can then add the numerators together, we can add the denominators together, and that will then also be equal to the sum of the numerators divided by the sum of the denominators. So we're going to use the same principle here, which means that we can now write Q dot to be equal to the sum of the numerators, which is TA minus TB. Oop, I'm ahead of myself again here. It would be TB. And then add to that TB minus TC, all divided by the sum of the denominators, which is B minus A over 4 pi KAB plus C minus B divided by, that would be 4 pi K, and of course this would be K1 and K2, because those are the two different layers, so maybe we'll call this K1 and K2 because they're not the same K, and uh, that's B here, and that would be B times C right there. Okay, now notice in the numerator, the T sub B's cancel out, which means that Q dot, which of course is equal to DQ DT, is equal to TA minus TC in the numerator, meaning the difference in the temperature between the outside and the inside, divided by what we call the heat resistances of each individual layer. So this would be the thickness of the first layer divided by 4 pi K1 times AB. And notice that 4 pi times AB is essentially the typical radius or typical cross-sectional area of the inner sphere. And then we have plus, in this case, C minus B divided by 4 pi K2 times BC, and again, 4 pi times BC is essentially the cross-sectional area of the second layer. And this then becomes the equation that we need for a multi-layer spherical shell, or a shell with multiple layers, and of course, if there's a third layer and a fourth layer, it'll be the total difference in the numerator of the temperatures, and then the denominator will be the heat resistances of each of the layers, and you can add as many layers as you like. And that is how it's done.